Notre Dame fans, welcome back to a special edition of the Irish Breakdown podcast. My name is Brian Driscoll. I'm the publisher at irishbreakdown.com, and I'm joined by former NFL coach and former UCLA head coach, Jim Mora. Coach, thank you so much for being on with us and talking about some of these Notre Dame players as we get closer and closer to the draft. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, the draft is just around the corner. Exciting time. Notre Dame has its pro day tomorrow, so there's still a lot we're going to learn about the draft resume of many of their players. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the offensive players, Coach, as we get ready for uh, the upcoming pro day and, of course, the draft, which begins April 29th. And I want to start with quarterback Ian Book and just kind of how you see him, Coach. The resume is obviously impressive, 30-5 and five, uh, record as a starter was a starter in two college football playoff games. The numbers are good. You know, obviously the cumulative aspect, you play a lot of games, you're going to have numbers. When you look at Ian Book and you project him to the next level, Coach, what are the things that you see about his game that make you feel this is someone that has a a home in in the National Football League? Well, I think he absolutely has a home in the National Football League. Um, I don't know that Ian's ever going to be a full-time starter in the NFL just because of there's a couple of things that may hold him back. But there's a big but. This kid is a winner. You know, you talk about his record at 30 and 5, the winningest quarterback in Notre Dame history. Uh, you know, all the things he's accomplished. It's, you know, yes, he, he, he didn't get his team to a national championship, but to be able to play in two college football playoff games is huge and it it's uh, it speaks volumes about his toughness and his character let's just talk about his deficiencies first you know the things that are going to hold him back number one are going to be his size you know he's not a big man I, i'll be interested to see what he measures at tomorrow at the pro day his actual height he's listed at six feet is he a little bit over that is he a little bit under it um it's not that big a deal but it is a big deal when you're talking about throwing from the pocket uh, and and that's not, you know, his strong suit. His strong suit is getting out on the edge, I think, extending plays. Um, and then his arm talent. And we're going to find out a lot about that tomorrow as well. Just some of the throws that these NFL coaches put him through uh, that force him to make. Can he throw from the far hash and throw a comeback on a dime, on time, on target, uh, where a, a re- defensive back doesn't have a chance to recover? Can he throw the deep ball? All of those things. And I'm not talking about – throw it at the collegiate level because we know he can do that, but at the pro level, and that's a huge step up. So there's some things there that are concerning for people, but, you know, he has athleticism and this is becoming increasingly important at the, at the, at the quarterback position in the NFL is the ability to move mobility, to escape pressure, uh, to push the edge and some of the zone read stuff that people are doing, the RPO stuff that people are now copying from college football, you know, those are important traits. He's obviously got football intelligence. You know, he's a smart young man. man. He makes good decisions. Um, he's got the ability to make great throws out of the pocket. He can get out of the pocket. He can extend plays and he can make accurate throws downfield. And then he has mobility. You know, he's a playmaker. I mean, let's look at this guy. I mean, you look at his career and he's made big plays when big plays needed to be made. He can get out and he can do it with his legs. He can show patience when he's running around back there and still find people down the field. So I think there's a lot to like, you know, I think he's going to get drafted somewhere in the mid rounds and I think he's going to make an NFL roster and, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll see the field. We'll see what he's like in preseason games. If he can overcome some of these perceived deficiencies, maybe he becomes a starter someday, but I know at the very least he is a quality backup. When you're looking for a backup quarterback in the NFL, you want someone that's a quick learner, that's uh, team oriented, that's going to stay prepared because you never know when your chance is going to come. And I think Ian Book fits those marks. Coach, let me ask you this question specifically about the pro day and a quarterback, especially a quarterback like Ian Book, whereas like Trevor Lawrence is just more like confirmation, like, yeah, okay, he's great. When you look at a player like Ian Book, who is still jockeying for significant position, I mean, you're talking about Trevor Lawrence could be the first pick, but if he doesn't get picked first, he's going second or third. We're talking about a guy that maybe from third round to seven round, you could see that kind of range. When you look at a pro day like for like Ian Book, if he goes out there tomorrow, if he's throwing the deep ball, not only accurately, but it's getting up and getting down quickly. It's not hanging up. If he's throwing the 15 yard out cuts on a on a rope and he's and he's accurate with it, if he's doing those kind of things that that make you as a as a former as a head coach, if you're in that building, how much Im, how much of improvement can he make on his stock if he does make those throws at a at a pro day? 
Well, I think he can improve his stock significantly. You know, I don't know if he can go from a seventh to a third, but he can go, you know, from a fifth to a third because he's got the intangibles. You know, he's a winner. He's athletic. He's got all of those things. And now all of a sudden you say, you know what? He, he does have a rope. He can make the throws. He, as you said, he can throw that 15-yard out cut from the far hash on a dime. He can get the deep ball where it needs to be. He can throw the seven cut. He can burn the, the, the curl or the dig in there and keep it away from the defender. Um, if he if he shows out on a consistent basis tomorrow and he does it with accuracy, then I think people go, hey, let's go take another look at his film. You know, we've got a lot of film on this guy. Let's let's dig deeper. You know, let's dig deeper on him and see if there isn't something there. What's the redeeming quality that this young man brings to the table that's going to help our organization become a world champion? When you also look at a coach, a player like him, coach, and, and you talked about you, you're not sure if he's a full time starter in the NFL. How do you evaluate that kind of quarterback differently than you would when you're at Trevor Lawrence's uh, pro day or Trey Lance or Mac Jones or Justin Fields? Is there a different criteria or do you still look at them on a similar scale? Well, I think with Trevor Lawrence and a Justin Fields or a Mac Jones, you know, they have such a, a, a large body of work and a high level of consistency in their play and a skill set that is very evident. Um, when they play. And I think certainly with a guy like Trevor is more of a confirmation. Yeah. You know what? He looks good. He's still six, six. He's two, still two forty. He still has a rope. You know, I think with Mac Jones, you know, you're going to find out about his arm strength uh, Trevor with, uh, with Justin Fields, you know, same thing. Can he throw with accuracy? How do all those things work with a guy like Trey, you know, he hasn't played a lot. So you're going to put him through some, some paces and a guy like, like Ian, you're going to say, is this guy an adequate backup? Can we count on him as a number two? And will he eventually be able to push for a starting role and you know, make him make throws to prove that? You know, you force him out of his comfort zone. We know there's things that he does very, very well. And, and that's evident on film. So what you do is you force him to do some of the things that he doesn't do well, see if he's been working on them, see if maybe the film is lying, see him, seeing if he's, if he's really improved or if, in fact, those are liabilities that he's never going to be able to overcome. Now, obviously, Ian played behind this last season one of the best offensive lines in college football, and there's four guys in, from that group that are now leaving for the NFL, so that's unfortunate for the next Notre Dame quarterback. Yeah. Uh, but when we look at those guys, Coach, I want to start with Liam Meikenberg. This is an interesting prospect for me because I see a guy that, to me, projects better to the NFL than Mike McGlinchey from my standpoint because he's such a better pass blocker whereas McGlinchey was a great run blocker but his draft stock among the the analysts and the mock drafters is not nearly what we've seen from past Notre Dame offensive tackles I've seen him as high as like 25 and I've seen him all the way down in the third round when you watch his film coach what are the things you like and what are the things that could maybe lead to some people not viewing him as as good as some of those other tackles well, what I like is I like his frame and I like his length. I like that he strikes with force. I like that he's an adequate athlete to get up field to the second level, make blocks, get downfield, make blocks. I like the fact that he's a three-year starter at left tackle at Notre Dame, one of the great programs in all of college football. And I think he's an NFL starter. I think the question is, is where is he an NFL starter? I think there's some people that are concerned about his lateral slide and his lateral quickness and his punch in pass protection and his, his ability to keep his hands on people and not get his hands knocked off. And is he, is he going to be at athletic enough to play the left tackle, which is the premium position? I think there's some people project him as a right tackle and certainly a starting right tackle, which is, heck, man, you got to have that. So I think the big question right there is, is he a left tackle or a right tackle? And I think what we're going to find out tomorrow, you're going to see a lot of offensive line coaches there. You're going to see people putting him through the paces. They're going to really, really test his ability to, to kick and slide, move laterally, do those things. I don't think there's any question about his, his run blocking at this point, not, none at all. I think, you know, I think there's nothing about uh, his, his demeanor, nothing at all. Uh, he's got the great frame. He stayed healthy. He's, just, you know, he's an experienced player. It's just can he play left tackle as opposed to right tackle? If he proves tomorrow – through some of the drills they put him through, if they can confirm, confirm some of the good things that we've seen on tape with him. And if people say, listen, he's a starting left tackle in the NFL, then his draft stock goes like this. If he, you know, if, if he doesn't do that, I don't think that 
you know, people go, oh, my God, this guy can't play. They go, you know, we're going to have to play him at right tackle, you know, and then maybe eventually, you know, as he develops his skill set, he becomes a left tackle. So I think that's the big question with Liam. I don't think there's any question in the world that he's an outstanding football player. I think he's a big time player. He's going to be a starter in the NFL. It's just is it left or is it right? Now here's a when I look at Ian Meikenberg, I, I think for me the debate is the 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 high floor, but you question the ceiling. Right. When we talk about Aaron Banks, to me it's the exact opposite. It's high ceiling, but you question the floor. How do you, when you look at Aaron Banks, coach? How do you evaluate him, and and what are some of the challenges of looking at a player who you notice the obvious skill, but then you don't see that consistency that you see from a player like in Liam Meikenberg or Robert Hainsey, who we're also going to talk about. Well, I mean, you look at the frame, first of all, and the power. And the 6'5", 300, whatever he measures tomorrow is going to be the official measurement. You know, we can say 6'5", 338. He might be 6'5 and a quarter or 6'4 and, you know, three quarters and anywhere between whatever. It doesn't matter. He's a big dude, right? Big, powerful <laughs> dude. He's explosive. Um, he's nasty. He's going to look for the extra hit. Uh, he only gave up two sacks this year. You know, I think that's pretty impressive. Uh and it's not off the charts, but it's pretty damn impressive. I, I think he's an eventual starter at offensive guard in the NFL. Uh, people see the upside because they see the power. They see the strength. They see the nastiness. Um, he's a little bit of a scheme fit uh, issue. You know, he's going to be better in a gap scheme and a power scheme rather than a zone scheme where he has to move lateral and then work up upfield. I don't know that that's always going to be the easiest thing for a guy of his size to do. But I think they're going to they're going to want to see how he works tomorrow. They're going to want to see when he's pushed. I mean, really, really pushed. Uh, does he give in a little bit or does he keep fighting? Uh, they're going to want to evaluate his his lateral quickness, his ability to get the second level. You're going to see a lot of drills with that. The change of direction stuff, the, the test, those are going to be important for him because he certainly has, as you said, a very, very high ceiling. Once again, now you're talking about a guard, and that's not necessarily a premium position. Of course, it's a very important position. So I think that uh, he can help himself tremendously tomorrow, and he can hurt himself. You know, I think I don't know that Liam can really hurt himself tomorrow. You know, I think he is what he is, and people recognize it, as you said, the consistency. And Aaron, it's just the inconsistency. So I think people want to see that. Speaking of consistency, Coach, we'll wrap it up with Robert Hainsey, who I, I look at and say this is, to me, one of the more underrated guys that you're going to find. He's certainly going to get the Harry Heastand seal of approval. Experienced four-year starter at Notre Dame, played on that line with Quentin Nelson and Mike McGlinchey back in 2017. He's a guy that just doesn't have the measurables, right, similar to kind of some of the knocks a little bit on Zach Martin. I'm not putting him on that level. But when you look at a Robert Hainsey, not a tackle in, in the NFL, but a guy that proved at the Senior Bowl, he can play guard and he can play center and learn those things quickly. I see a guy that has a chance to be in the NFL for a long time, Coach. Whether oh, or not he'll be drafted high, what do you see from Robert Hainsey when you look at the I film? See what, I see what you see. You know, I, I see that the the greatest thing that happened to him was, number one, the chance to go to the senior bowl, to be put at offensive guard, and then be forced to play some center. Because now he shows his value to NFL evaluators. He shows that, yes, I can move from right tackle, and I can play guard, and I can I have that skill set. And look, I've never really snapped the ball, but if you need me to jump in there, hey, I'm going to jump in there and play some center. I'm going to do it at a pretty high level. He's explosive. He's strong. Uh, he, he can move folks out. Um, I think he's a really good position blocker, you know, center of gravity, keeping a wide base, uh, hands inside, doing a great job. I think he's a great – he does a heck of a job of getting to the second level. I think he's got vision. He's got awareness. He's got football instincts. He played tackle. So he knows how to pass protect. He knows how to work in space. Now he's going to be covered up as a guard. It's not going to be as tough. But if you're facing some of these great three techniques, it certainly is very, very helpful to have, you know, pass protection ability. I, I think, you know, for him, it's, it's you know, arm length. Like you said, some of the measurables, mm -hmm. not really a puller, um, you know, going to have to learn to do those things. But you talk about upside and you talk about uh, an incredible value and evaluate your football team. See, when you suit up seven offensive linemen on a Sunday, you want three tackles. Okay, well, you got your five starters, all right? And then you've got to have an, an extra tackle and an extra interior guy. And if your extra guy can play guard and center, then and that allows your starting guards and your starting center really focus on just one position. 
You know, if you've got a guy that can just play guard and, and let's say your center gets hurt, then your starting guard has to move into center and this guy moves into guard. I don't know if your offensive line is as strong. Maybe it is. But if you've got a backup that you have a lot of confidence in that can play guard and center at an adequate level, then there's value in that. And I, I think Robert has those types of things. He's got position versatility. Heck, in a pinch, in a pinch, you can put him out at right tackle and he can survive. And teams like that. They like that a lot. You talking about just that if something every, everything goes wrong and we got to throw him out there, you yeah. he can get you out of a game. He can get Absolutely. you out of a game. Absolutely, you, you might have week. to. You know, you might have to do some things, slide his way. You might have to put a tight end over there. You might have to use a back to chip a little bit. But as you just said, and you said the keyword in a pinch, he can get you out of a game. And there, there's a lot of value there. Coach, I appreciate you joining us. We're going to get together one more time as we get closer to the draft. We're going to talk about Tommy Tremble, a couple other guys. And, and I want to ask you then about a couple intriguing 2022 NFL draft guys. But I'm going to give you a couple yeah. weeks is to get into film and check those guys out, yeah. Coach. So I need that. Again, appreciate you so much, Coach, for being on with us. All right, Brian. My pleasure.